Hi, this is Cindy Hodgson with Essential Therapies, and it's so beautiful out here this evening, I thought I would just have a chat about back pain and the whole idea of herniated disc or bulging disc. So this topic, and there are mosquitoes around here, but they're not getting me. Um, this topic is dear to my heart right now because I'm kind of having a little bit of a flare up of this problem um, which sometimes comes around and the irony of the whole thing is that I first had my bout of symptoms with a little bit of a bulging disc issue the same week that I went to my McKinsey course which is a physical therapy course for exactly that problem so I had to drive through four and a half hours of wild winter snowstorm and didn't want to get out of the car so I ended up having this horrible sciatic pain down into my buttock and down into my leg the night before arriving at this McKinsey course which was just so appropriate and as always with um, things that happen to me it always helps to experience them so that I can share it with other people so I have talked about this topic so many times over the last 22 years so I'm just gonna talk with you now like I would with any patient who was in to see me and that is to explain a little bit more about just the mechanics of a bulging disc or a herniated disc now sometimes the disc is bulging so much that there's not a whole lot that we can do with these positions but for so many people we can just change the mechanics of our positioning some and have an awareness of what's going on and that alone can can really fix things i've had so many patients over the years that just had responded so well to just understanding what's going on and doing these basic movements that it's it's worthwhile to share them here with you now so the way i like to describe the whole vertebrae disc situation is to describe it using something that we're all very familiar with and it's hockey pucks and donuts okay so the vertebrae are hockey pucks and the discs are like jelly donuts so if you can imagine hockey pucks and jelly donuts in a stack um, just kind of think of that for right now and if you can imagine let's say that the you're looking at a side view and the head is pointing this way the nose is pointing this way and you think of these hockey pucks and donuts think of what we do most of the day we are sitting and slouching oftentimes we're bending forward or maybe we're lifting to pick up that big bag of cat food or whatever and a grandchild you name it we bend this way so when we bend those hockey pucks all come together especially through the lumbar area which normally has a curve that goes this way and instead we're curving this way so now the hockey pucks are like this where do you suppose that jelly is going to push in the jelly donut out the back right well right along the very back is a really thick ligament that keeps it from going straight out the back so it usually goes toward one side or the other in really severe situations it can go towards both sides so imagine you're bending forward you start to get a bulge there the the jelly donut itself can't contain that jelly anymore and it starts to push out and it goes onto the nerve that comes right out there so that's what's happening we get that pressure the nerve compresses down or it gets compressed and we have pain that shoots down now in general and i'm making this very simplified so we could go into all kinds of things but when we have pain that shoots down a leg the further down the leg it shoots the more severe it is so what we would rather see is pain that it comes up closer to the back rather than even down into the buttock or into the down to the thigh or down into the leg or down into the foot okay so what we are looking for in positions that are improving our condition is what we call a centralizing of the pain so if I have pain going down into my foot that's really bad as if I do a position or get in a position that helps to take that pain out of my lower leg and maybe up into my thigh well that's better if it goes up a little further that's better yet if it's in the small of my back even if I didn't have pain in the small of my back before but now I do but I don't have pain down my leg that's better as well even if the pain is a little bit worse so just to recap what we're trying to do is centralize the pain if we have any type of nerve compression in the back that's causing us pain down into the leg 
What we want to do is get that pain out of the leg, first of all, and preferably completely gone, but it might end up in the back a little bit first. So let's say, and I'll use the pain rating, even though I hate using pain rating because it is really so subjective, but let's say you have a pain of severe pain is a 10 out of 10 and a no pain is zero. Let's say your pain is, is a five out of 10 and it's going down your leg, okay? But we get into a position and now that pain is maybe a seven, but it's not in your leg anymore and it's just in the small of your back. That's actually good. That's okay for a while because as that heals, that might happen. The idea is to get that pressure off the nerve. So if we're able to take these hockey pucks and donuts now and let's say extend them backwards, back this way, that jelly is gonna to wanna to try and go to the front if that jelly hasn't gone out too far, right? If it's gone out too far, then we have another problem. But for a lot of people, if they get into a prone position or extension position that pushes that jelly donut portion forward, takes the pressure off the disc and it gives that, that area time to heal. So another analogy I like to use is thinking of, of a cut on a knuckle. Have you ever gotten a paper cut right on the knuckle and it just takes forever to heal? So every time you bend your finger, it's opening that back up again and now you, you have the same problem that you did before. Sometimes it can get even worse and very irritated for a while and maybe even infected because we're using our finger all the time. But if you finally bandage it up and hold it there and you don't let that knuckle bend, it doesn't take very long and then it starts to heal. So the body puts down all these collagen cross links and it, it tries to create scar tissue over that area, right? So that it will heal. If we keep opening it up, we're breaking that scar tissue. So with this disc situation, the hockey pucks and jelly donuts, if we can keep ourselves from bending and rounding so much, we can let that area heal. And that's what we really want to be aware of is our bending. Now, we bend about 3,000 times a day. Some people more, some people less. So think of that every time we're bending that disc situation open and we're not allowing it to heal. So the first thing you wanna see if, if it's going to make any improvement for you is to just lie on your belly. So I'm just gonna go through a few positions here. So I started doing this quite a bit more this past week, getting things under control and feeling much better. So. You're gonna come down onto your belly and you can just lay with your head on your hands first. And also be careful getting to this position because we wanna to try to avoid rounding the back as much as possible, right? So just starting here, laying down flat. Now, when you are first here, you might not notice any difference. Might take a little while, might, take, might be immediate, might be quick relief, completely out of the, the lower leg the thigh, the buttock, wherever you have the pain, or you may need to be here for a little while. So just give it some time. For me, right now, I'm having a little bit of discomfort in my, in my buttock, and I know that that is probably gonna go away by the time I'm done here, because I've been messing around with this all, all week, and I've been really careful about bending, and I know that this is a pattern for me, and it, it, it will resolve with, without any problem. So just starting here, so maybe, just give yourself five minutes, maybe even 10 minutes to give this a try. If that's feeling good, you can try propping on your elbows and just giving yourself some time here. Now I feel a little bit more pressure in my back, a little bit more tenderness maybe in the, in the very center part of my low back and that's okay. The buttock pain is going away. So I also have a little bit of muscle tightness in there that I'm feeling. And all of this being said about the disc, here's what I want to mention as well. As a myofascial release physical therapist, I can tell you it's, it's usually not just a disc that's compressing on stuff. There's usually a, a fascial component as well, just because so many of us have, have fascial restrictions from so many different things in life. So from here, you may even be able to do a cobra type pose where you're pressing the pubic bone down into the floor a little bit. Think of lifting the abdomen up toward the spine as well. Lift, not just push, but lift with the upper body, keeping the head and neck in line as much as possible. And then if that feels good, you can press into the hands, keeping the elbows in. I like to make it a little bit more active by pressing the hands down and like almost like you're sliding your body forward through your hands, you're getting some activation there and then gently lifting up. 
This feels really, really good to me right now. It takes away all the pain in my lower back and in my buttock. I'm just holding here and then going up and down several times or whatever feels good to you. For a lot of people, this is really difficult because of arm strength and that's okay. Be really careful not to let the shoulders reach up toward the ears. Bring the shoulder blades down the back. And then adding your breath as you inhale, lift. You can exhale lower down. And to get a little bit more compression in the low back, you can inhale as you lift. Hold it here and breathe it out. Let yourself sink and then lower back down. You can also add some back or low back and buttock and leg exercises here. For a lot of people, you'll have one glute that or one buttock area that is not working as well as the other. So you can do some hip extension exercises right here. Resting your forehead on your hands, keeping the legs straight, reach the leg behind you. Think of pressing the pubic bone down a little bit into the floor and lift. And really think about using the buttocks muscle here as you lift lift and then the other side as well so obviously do some more repetitions of this whatever you feel is comfortable for yourself and then as you progress a little bit more into your strength and what you're able to do you can do trunk extension here roll the shoulder blades back and down keep the chin down and the head and neck in alignment as you lift think of lifting at a spot between the shoulder blades so just like there's a little hook there and something is lifting you up. Lift and lift. So there are some basic exercises to start. If you're having some back problems and you're not sure quite what it is yet, be sure to get it checked out. Maybe get to your physician, get to a, a, a physical therapist to get evaluated and make sure that mechanically you're protecting your back and especially if you have any disc issues. Now as you get up from the floor, and this is the hard part I think, is all the time being aware of when you're bending and what's happening in your spine. So from here, being very careful. And I, I know my body and my positioning abilities pretty well right now. So I've worked through this for several days and I'm, and I'm doing pretty, pretty well with doing some bending. But I'm being very careful about being in neutral spine so if you would like to have more information about neutral spine, which is a whole nother video that I have called Know Your Core and Neutral Spine Basics also on our website and on Facebook and on YouTube. And the website is esstherapy.com. So have a good night and have fun protecting your back. Thanks.